Stadium, Columbia. The kickoff call-in show is next as you listen to another Tennessee Football Saturday on WIVK AM, WIVK FM in Knoxville, Tennessee. For John Wilkers... Welcome to williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia for SEC football. South Carolina, 5-3 and three against Tennessee, now 3-4. and four. South Carolina defeated Vanderbilt at Nashville 19-16 to 16 last Saturday, while Tennessee had an open date following the Volunteers' home loss to Alabama 17-13 two weeks ago. A victory for the Gamecocks today would assure a winning season and, in all probability, a bowl bid for first-year coach Brad Scott. The Volunteers are 3-4 and four under coach Philip Fulmer. Four games left today with South Carolina, an open date again next week, then home games with Memphis and Kentucky, the season finale at Vanderbilt. Here in Columbia, in the Vol Network radio booth, this is John Ward. Bill Anderson, intuition. What does your intuition tell you about today's game? Tennessee better be ready to play, I think, John. Uh, as you mentioned there, South Carolina has an awful lot to gain by winning this football game, and there's been a lot of hype over here. They're, everybody's fired up about it, and this, this crowd I know will be in it from having been here once before when Tennessee got beat. This could be a very tough game for them. And Tennessee plays South Carolina, and, of course, the Gamecocks, those who were there last year, remember the Volunteers won in Knoxville. 55 to 3. So they have memories of that uh, contest played last year. While Tennessee, of course, has memories of the game played here two years ago. And to reflect a bit, here's your host, Randy Smith. Thanks, John. Hi again, everybody. Today's game between Tennessee and South Carolina, the 13th time the two schools have met on the gridiron. Tennessee has won eight, South Carolina twice. There have been two ties. The series dates back to a 1903 game played in Columbia, South Carolina. South Carolina defeated Tennessee 24-23 at Columbia two years ago. The Volunteers, though, won 55-3 at Knoxville last season as Tennessee got to heralded quarterback Steve Tannehill and sacked him seven times in that ball game on their way to that 55-3 route. Good afternoon and welcome to Southeastern Conference football as South Carolina hopes to make its final home game insurance for its first winning season since 1990. Hosting Tennessee, now three and four, hoping to avoid its first losing season since 1989. The Gamecocks, five and three, winning last Saturday at Vanderbilt, 1916. Tennessee, three and four, losing two weeks ago to Alabama, 17-13, an open date last week for the ball. Two years ago, South Carolina here in Columbia handed the Big Orange its third loss in a row in 1992, 24-23, in so doing knocked the balls out of the SEC playoff game. Today, it's crucial to both teams. We'll be back in just one minute. Uh, offensive line, Lehman at 6'5", 287. The 6 feet 221. And the quarterback to start will be the freshman from New Orleans, Peyton Manning, 6'5", 207. But John, I think today's a challenge for them. This is a big, strong defensive front up. They play good defense inside. Maybe not as quick as some of the defensive teams they have played. They're going to have to give Manning good pass protection and get some blocking. Then time for him to throw the ball. I think we'll probably see the ball put in the air quite a bit more than usual. Tennessee defensively, and we're just going to dwell right now as the uh, enthusiasm begins to build here electronically. The South Carolina game entrance is... Uh, uh, accompanied not only by the sounds you hear in the background as they will come racing onto the court, but because of smoke and whatever else at the end, explosions coming up. Tennessee in the secondary, of course. Ronald Davis has been dismissed from the team for violation of team rules. Not playing will be Raymond Austin out with an injury. So Tennessee will start Jenkins, true freshman Fair, Parker, and Summers against Steve Tannehill. It is a big job. Yeah, Tannehill's playing much better here late in the season. Last week he had a big game against Vanderbilt, John. He's hitting on 64% of his passes, and he had 22 of 32 for 205 yards, no interception. Big day against Vandy, so he's gonna, Tennessee's going to have to play one of their better games, and they're catching Tennessee at a time that they're kind of weakened in their defensive secondary. The background, Fireworks, whatever, as South Carolina races onto the field. And as we look down to our left, the white-clad volunteers, supported by over 10,000 uh, University of Tennessee fans who have come to Columbia for this game, are ready as well. As the volunteers come racing onto the field at Columbia, ladies and gentlemen, it's football time in Tennessee.
naturally interested in that, but just so that you know why Bill and I were chuckling a moment ago, space for three people at the table. The spotter, the statistician, and me. So Bill Anderson is standing behind me watching the game. Now you see where you rate. I know. I've known that for a long time, John. <laughs> what do you expect, Bill, the keys to this game for these two teams? Well, I think turnovers, defensive, they're both going to have to play good defense, solid defense, and not make a lot of mistakes. I think this may be a, a pretty evenly matched uh, team. Tennessee and South Carolina, the Volunteers wearing white jerseys with orange numerals trimmed for the first time in history in black. Can you see them better, Mattingly? He thinks so. I'm not sure. Time alone will tell. In garnet and black, that's South Carolina. Garnet jerseys with white numerals. South Carolina won the toss, will receive. Tennessee defends the goal to your left, the north goal. As the field comes downfield, the kickoff comes downfield to the goal line, brought out of there to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, and he is swarmed as he gets actually pushed back inside the 15-yard line. And the man who was there as Terry Fair made the tackle on Joe Troop, he deliberated a moment as he took the ball, as we said, two yards deep in the end zone. He thought about it and then brought it out. And Tennessee was able to back them up. And when they finally spot the ball, it's going to be inside the 15-yard line, as we described it for you. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Here comes Kenny Hill at quarterback, Bill. Great job by Tennessee down there, John. He did hesitate in there a little bit, cost him some yardage, but Tennessee covered it very well. Here comes South Carolina splitting the running backs, Bennett and Pritchett. Now they shift into an eye with Bennett the tailback. And this will be Bennett trying the right side. Doesn't make much as their defending was Tennessee's Ben Talley on Brandon Bennett. Our broadcast position not making excuses, but just that we may be a little slower in calling it for you. They're lining up without a huddle. We're at the 10-yard line north end. The ball is on the opposite side at the right now at the 12-yard line after the loss of a yard. So it's second down and 11. Without a huddle, South Carolina jumps into a shotgun. Two wides left, one to the right. Tanny Hill back to throw, sets up a screen pass. Yes, that is pumped on the right side, grabbed there at the 10, out to the 15, forward as a penalty marker is down on the play. Close to the 18, 19 yard line was Pritchett, who was the receiver. Leland Taylor pursues for Tennessee to make the tackle. It was second down and 11. And as they discuss the infraction after a gain on the play that has moved it outside the 15 yard line. An illegal block is called, as you hear, against South Carolina. And it will be a penalty if Tennessee accepts it of half the distance, or it would be third down upcoming. And the discussion ensues as no decision has been made, to my knowledge. They're still talking about it. Anyway, for Tennessee defensively, Burton will be a tackle with Taylor. Now here comes the penalty. The defensive ends are White and Tally. The linebackers, George Kidd, of course, has been suspended. And it will be Sanders, Gallion, and Hines. The cornerbacks are Jenkins and Fair. The safeties, Parker and Summers. Second down, 18. Ball at the five-yard line of South Carolina. No score. High snap. Tannehill is able to pull it down. Gives it off. Big hole right side. Running forward and breaking to the five. Up to the 10. Carries the ball to the 15. That is Mike Reddick who moves it outside the 15-yard line and is shoestringed down by Jason Parker. And I think the high snap, Bill Anderson, alerted or maybe distracted Tennessee so that they overran the play, opening it up on that little delay to the right side to Reddick for a sizable game. That was a very dangerous snap there, John. Good thing Tanny Hill's big, tall guy, 6'3", reached up about as high as he'd go to snag that ball with a one hand. Third down five, Carolina at its 18-yard line on the right hash mark. Tennessee in a four-man front. Tannehill, back to throw, pass down and out is complete, it will be a first down. The pass is complete to Monty Means, who makes the grab near the 25-yard line. Jenkins comes across to make the tackle. That will be for Means, his 15 catch of the year, and it will be a first down for South Carolina. And most importantly, it gets them out of that treacherous situation inside the 10-yard line. The ball is now at the 25, first down and 10 for the Gamecocks. No score, 13-23 to go in the first quarter. Tennessee with a five-man front. Shifting into the eye is Carolina. 
Here's the delay handoff to Bennett. Bennett looks for running room. There's a penalty marker down, a hold on 79. And it was Tennessee carrying the, uh, the re runner on the left side, Sanders and Taylor teaming up to shove Bennett back downfield. He made it uh, maybe a yard on the play, but there was a marker down. With the score, nothing, nothing. At the 25-yard line, South Carolina taking the opening kickoff. They were backed up deep, and a penalty moved them all the way back to the five. And now as the officials, and we'll run them down for you, discuss it, we'll take 10 seconds station identification. This is the Ball Network. The flagship station. Tennessee. It will be a personal foul penalty, a 15-yard step off. And so here is South Carolina at the 40-yard line, first down and 10 to go. Carolina handoff goes to Pritchett on a little delay through the left side. He pops forward over left guard and moves for a gain of three, maybe four yards before Tyrone Hines is there to make his 30th tackle of the year with help again from Leland Taylor. The officials, Bill Goss from Atlanta. It goes to Bennett. Bennett carrying through the right side is swarmed and dropped as they fake the reverse on the give for to Fred Frederick and Bennett kept the ball and Tennessee didn't take the reverse, stayed right in the flow and Jesse Sanders comes up to crunch down the running back for a loss on the play. Actually a loss of close to four, so make it third down and 10. On the year, South Carolina is converting on 35% of its third down tries. Nothing, nothing to score. Ball rests at the Carolina 40 yard line, third down and 10. And into the shotgun, no, they shift into an eye formation. Wide receiver left and right. Off play action, back to throw is Tannehill. Man wide open downfield, pass overthrown, incomplete to Frederick. And so it will be fourth down upcoming. Frederick had found a crease, Bill Anderson, but the pass was overthrown. Yeah, he ran a turn in. He went. Uh, he had, probably had the first down by four or five yards, John. He was wide open in there. Tannehill had good time and just overthrew him. So it's fourth down upcoming and into the game for South Carolina at his 15-yard line. Nothing, nothing score. Tennessee drops into an eight-man rush as the punt is away. High, wobbly end-over-end -end kick is going to bounce. Takes a great Carolina roll, then is snared by Silvan, who is immediately decked at the 20-yard line. So Tennessee goes on offense, first down and 10, after a relatively short punt that, as I read it, bounced first in the vicinity of the 36. Rolls all the way down to the 20. It was picked up at that point, and Silvan was down off tailback up the middle cutting to the outside and twirling forward for a gain of right at four yards is James Stewart he's tackled by Ben Washington the Carolina defense has its two normal tackles back after injuries at sideline them one for one one for two those being turnip seat and Sullivan the ends rump and Evans linebackers Brooks Campbell Smith the corners are Corey Bell and cousin the safeties Washington and Watkins Tennessee second down handoff fullback gets a yard that was Mose Phillips diving straight ahead from the 24 to the 25. And it will be for Tennessee third and five as Sullivan at 6-2-269 makes his 14th tackle of the year. At 6-5, 207 a freshman. Has a receiver right, one left. South Carolina has 11 interceptions this year. Manning to throw. Pass down and out complete. Did he get a first down? He got a first down. As Joey Kent makes the catch at the 30 and dances forward to the 31. He was tackled by Cousin, but Joey Kent makes his 24th catch of the year on the pass into the flat. Just a quick hitch out there. He picked up enough to yardage to get to first down, John, and maybe made a yard or so after he caught the ball. But that was a good throw, quick throw, quick delivery by Manning, right on the money. And so Tennessee has their first down in a nothing-nothing game as the ball's again lined in the eye against a three-down line defensive display by South Carolina, which affects an audible by Manning. Now Manning gives the ball to Stewart, gets a hole through the left side, and he goes darting from the 30 to the 35 and forward to the 37-yard line. Following the blocking of Lehman and Mays, he was tackled by Ben Washington Scott in his first year. He played at Missouri. Tennessee, second down three. Nothing, nothing score. This is Manning. This is Stewart to the outside. Stewart to the 40. Stewart cuts back 45, 50. Down the right side, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25. He's not got a bounds inside the 20-yard line as it was Terry Cousins trailing, but it was James Stewart who got a block on the right side. I think it was Phillips. I'm not sure. It could have been the wide receiver who made a man in motion back to the inside, but Stewart ran outside the block and dashes downfield. First down, they got it. He got a block at the corner, and after that, Johnny just really outran everybody. It looked like the South Carolina his quarterback over here was out of position and he got lost in it and then Stewart just took off and outran everybody. A 45-yard run by Stewart. Three carries, 55 yards. Marked the ball at the 18-yard line of South Carolina. Tennessee first out. A single running back as Tennessee adjusts its alignment. 
The running back is Phillips. This is Phillips. Big hole left side, but he is tripped and falls forward close to the 15-yard line as he moves through that hole by turnip seed reaching from the inside and Brooks closing from the out. Touchdown in a nothing-nothing game with nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Sun peeks out from behind the overcast skies as Tennessee again aligns with a single running back, Phillips. South Carolina, three down linemen to rush. They've got five defensive backs. Manning, a delay. Phillips, left side, not much, but he turns and fights and carries the ball close to the 10-yard line. Stacy Evans was there. Phillips was slowed inside the 15 in the vicinity of the 13-yard line, but he broke that arm tackle and fights his way down to about the 11-yard line. Tennessee looking a little, taking a little different look, John. They had everybody split wide across the field, had the defense spread from one sideline to the other. Third down, a short four for Tennessee. The Volunteers need down to the eight-yard line. So Jealousy aligns itself in that same set. Single running back is Mose Phillips. Two right, two left receiver-wise. Peyton Manning rolls left, looks to throw. Pass, fights with the football. Billy Williams, who came into the lineup. He makes the catch at the six. He fights at the five. He drives at the three. He is tackled at the two-yard line, at which point Jealousy will have it first down, goal to go. Well, look, then what we've been seeing, we are talking about that earlier, as far as getting in tight when you get down in there, John, they're spreading the field, opening the defense, come out with a quick uh, throw inside on the hitch. Big, good play. So Tennessee will have it first down and goal in a scoreless game. This Tennessee's first possession, and the Volunteers now will line up in a power set. Stewart, Phillips, and Hayden running backs. Oh. Oh. This will be Tennessee beginning the play, and flags fly all over the way, all over the field, as I think Tennessee, with a first and goal at the two, will be guilty of illegal procedure. Those are the things that keep you out of the end zone. Tennessee now first and goal at the seventh. Nothing, nothing to score. Two wide outs right, I formation. Stewart is the tailback. This is Stewart. Tries to get to the outside, and he is going to be buried for a loss back at the 10-yard line. As South Carolina is up playing the run, from the inside comes Hank Campbell, the middle linebacker, helping out the linebacker on the right side, Brooks. They got Stewart, and they drilled him. They down. covered it real quick. He really broke it to the outside, back to the weak side end of the boundary. Didn't have any lead blockers or anything out there. He's pretty naked, and they South Carolina was all over him. Now Tennessee goes back to that previous set. A single running back is Aaron Hayden. Two wides left, two right for the Volunteers. As Manning fates to throw, looking downfield, pass caught. Rip down at the two, at the one. Give him six. Touchdown, James Stewart. Tennessee comes out and again goes laterally out of that set, spreading them out, and Stewart makes the catch. He would not be denied. Took it in, John, and that was good play calling out, and they spread the defense out, did the thing. South Carolina, big, strong. If you get them in a wad, spread them over the field, they don't have seem to have that much speed. So Tennessee overcomes an illegal procedure penalty inside the 10-yard line. Manning connects for the touchdown pass, his fifth of the year. This will be Bexport to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold by Wheaton. The kick by Bexport is in the air. The kick by Bexport is good. Just as he marches, 80 yards, 10 plays, 4 minutes, 50 seconds, the length of the drive. Tennessee leads by a score of 7 0 over South Carolina. The touchdown coming on the flip from Manning to Stewart, who was hit at the three, but he turned into the end zone. Bill Anderson at this game will mention again, seated behind me to watch. And on the kickoff. Running room this time. As Troop breaks it out past the 25, maybe the 26, depending on the spot of the football. Well, certainly a much better decision, much better blocking on that. The special teams are going to have to perform. And, you know, anytime we talk about the key, I always feel bad because that's the third phase of any team that has to perform well. Otherwise, it gets you in trouble. So Steve Tannehill and company come out trailing 7-0 in this game. 6.33 remaining in the first quarter. And again, no... Plenty of time to let this one go. Now that breaks down just a little bit, he throws it, and it's going to be incomplete. He really wow. felt the, the backside pressure on that one, Jim, and it was smart. He threw it away basically into the ground. Otherwise, he was about to get hit from behind. And that shows you how much Steve has learned over the years and how he has matured all the way to this junior year. Offensive line, too, uh, Ted, giving him plenty of time to survey the field. He checked off three receivers at that particular moment. And again, they operate out of the shotgun and using no huddle. 
Inside handoff and a little bit of running room that time for Rennick, who is getting some early work here in the first quarter. Hines and Galen in there on that tackle. And uh, I'd have to say that the Gamecocks offensive line won that battle. That'll be third and seven at the 29. And again, another passing down. Tannehill under pressure, rolls away from it. Can he escape totally? No, he cannot. Leland Taylor, the first man to get to him, along with number 80, Billy Williams. All right, you're down at the defensive lineman level here now. Look at him. You see he's looking. He gets that pressure. He tries to turn the spin out, but he just can't get away. Hanging on to that jersey, and Steve wisely tucks the ball and goes down. That brings up a punting situation now. Good snap and a high lofty kick by Jeff Cook. Taken at the 37 and at a big time hit. Unloading that time, number six, Ben Washington. Check his dentures. I think some of the cavities may have come loose. All right, from the 43 yard line. Manning is picture perfect in three tosses and the touchdown pass. Straight ahead running and again, lots of room for Tennessee. Penalty marker fly. This one could be called back. That's Aaron Hayden, who popped out of the backfield that time and started heading downfield. And we probably have a holding call, and I think it's going to be against number 11, Joey Kent. Watch it field level here. There's the big hole open there. And as he scoots to the outside, and they threw that in, there was a couple of good blocks there. One by the running back, holding Chester Ford. The offense. Can you want opening the hole, but I think it might have been Ratliff that reached in there and grabbed. All right, here's uh, some other scores for you. Uh, in the second quarter, Florida State leading Duke 14 to 6. Nebraska shutting out Colorado 10 0. That's in the second. And in the second, Michigan 13. Wisconsin 10. Big surprise. Arkansas 7. Auburn nothing. That's in the second. Manning again looking to go. His fourth pass of the day, and he's got his man up again on the far sideline. This is a much longer pattern for Manning, but he has hit four straight passes as the pass was caught by Kendrick Jones. There's the fake handoff, freezes the linebackers, but watch Tony Watkins. He's playing soft here, or check that Corey Bell playing soft, and gives him about four yards before he ever makes contact with it. Gives him the first down, too. Tennessee looking very sharp early in this game. Manning territory. Peyton Manning on the fake, in trouble. Let's it fly into an open area. And I think we might see a hanky. No, the referee started to go for it and then put his hand away from his back pocket, probably thinking that the ball would have not have been caught. It wasn't in a catchable area. It was a, definitely an uncatchable ball. Manning does a great job, makes the good fake, sold the cameraman and the crowd, and then gets into the center of the field and off balance just hurls it, but it's way over everybody. Pretty good pressure on Manning that time. That was Chris Rupp who was putting on the pressure. And again, more running room right here for Tennessee. Breaking that one out is Aaron Hayden. He had one call back, but this one will not be a fine run that time by Hayden. Hayden had a great game two weeks ago against Alabama. And watch again the offensive line. And out of the backfield comes another great block by Chester Ford. They are just bit by bit at will picking apart the Gamecock defense. First and 10 at the 29-yard line. Again operating out of the eye. Now the backs reset. Again, Hayden, and he is snowed under at the line of scrimmage. That's why it's so important, Jim, that, that Sullivan is back in the lineup. To the 30-yard line, they set up a screen on the far side. It's completed, and a well-executed play, and depending on the spot, we'll wait and see if, indeed, they do have enough yardage for the first down. Ronnie Pillow that time with the reception from Manning. Jason Lehman, the uh, right tackle, or left tackle, I should say, did a great job of throwing the downfield block to keep this screen open. 
Goes right, comes back left. Watch that block right there. Took the Gamecocks right out of it. Everybody else was far away from making the tackle. So Tennessee right back in business. They already lead this contest 7-0 as we count down to the three-minute mark in the first period of play. From the 19-yard line, Manning checking off. Line, no markers fly, however. Bose Phillips that time, the ball carrier for the Volunteers. Manning very much in control. I know Brandon Stewart's happy that the balls are doing well, but I think Brandon wishes he was in the ball game. Watch the line surge right here by Tennessee. We talked about how big their offensive line is, and they just clear a space for Phillips. Bubba Miller, who's starting at guard today, 6'1", 285, a junior, number 71, really open that hole. Manning under pressure, lets it go, and a big hit that time by Washington to shake that one away. David Horn was the intended receiver. Big play here for the South Carolina defense. Manning wants to go to the air, got his man open, and the catch is made, trying to struggle toward the end zone, but he's not going to get there. Joey Kent with the reception. The defense did a great job to swarm to the ball and push him out of bounds and keep him out of the end zone. But he did get enough for the first. Manning again looking over the middle. And he's got time, Ted. That's the key. And he keeps going to that left side. And we haven't seen him throw a pass to the right side of the field yet. Now, Benji Young, the linebacker, had the coverage on that as they were in man. And he slipped going over there and just couldn't make it. And now the Gamecocks have called a timeout. Manning is 6 of 8 for 65 yards, and he's got a touchdown already in this game. He's done basically a controlled sort of passing game, relatively safe passes, with the exception that he threw uh, deep down the field. But that basically was a throwaway because he was under pressure. Well, then again, Tennessee keeps exploiting that left side, and they are having almost at will success with it. No problems at all. Motion. Todd's right. you got to shake him and get rid of him as quickly as possible. Manning. And Manning that time hangs on to the football himself. Big pile up as they tried to advance forward. Second and goal now from the four yard line. And there's movement everywhere, and that is going to go against Tennessee. All right, second and nine now from the nine yard line. Play action again. He goes to the same side. Tennessee moving it down near the third yard, uh, third, uh, three yard line. Ronnie Pillow again with the reception. Lee Wiggins, the cornerback over there out of Hartsville, getting worked over by the Tennessee passing uh, offense here. Wiggins playing a little soft. Well, I don't know how you can be playing soft right now, Ted. I think you got to be up and chuck him at the line. Yeah, you have to. You got to like change something here. You got to be like a perma press suit on these guys. This inside the 20 because if not you're in big trouble from the two yard line and this time Peyton Manning operates out of the shotgun formation inside hand up no Peyton, uh, Manning keeps it himself but he didn't get in they got to him before he could get to the pylon what a big play by the for it. what a test for the Gamecocks here South Carolina now will have to operate at about their own one-foot line. Tannehill wants to put it up. Got a man open on the sidelines, and it is caught. No, now they rule incomplete. Daryl Nicklow went for the pass, and from our vantage point, it appeared that he might have had control, but the official was right there and had a much better look at it than from our vantage point. Nice, nice gutsy call there. Here you are. You're looking down like the coaches would at practice. Right there. Oh, yeah, went underneath. Went out, out from underneath it. Gutsy call, though, right there in your own end zone to throw it. I think you're going to see him throw it again. I wouldn't be surprised. 
inside handoff. They get a couple of yards to move it up maybe near the three, possibly the four-yard line by Pritchard. Now time is going to expire here in the first period of play. And that will be it. The first quarter is in the record books. And this huge crowd at Williams Price sold out. Over 73,000 enjoying what they're seeing right now as Tennessee has a 7 nothing lead over South Carolina. Well, Jim, the volunteers have put two loads in their muzzle, and only one of them got fired off. And then the defense did a great job of standing them up there at the goal gun formation. Again, the high snap. And it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. And that cer certainly would have been very, very costly. That was Shane Burton who got his hand on that ball and batted it up in the air and almost caught it. There it is. He's looking for it right there and sort of lost uh, where the ball had traveled to. Shane Burton at 6-5 and used that entire frame to knock down that Tannehill pass. What a shame now for the Gamecocks who made such a great defensive play and not be able to capitalize on it. Erwin Jeffcoat at the very back end of the end zone. Low snap. And he gets off a wobbly kick. Sylvan will come over and take it at the 39-yard line. Trying to get to the outside, and he's going to be knocked down as he retreated back near the 40. Ben Washington there. Freshman. But boy, you know, in a couple of years, if these two young men hang in there and hang tough, they'll be a great asset to this volunteer offense. All right, so this will be Stewart's first opportunity. Should now they run the reverse of the pass over to Stewart. Stewart with some running room, just shy of the first down, so lots of razzle-dazzle on the very first play that Stewart checks into the game. Boy, sometimes on off weeks, I think offensive coordinators get real crazy and happy, and they come up with all these wild trick plays. And what a pass. Looked like a loaf of bread he was hiking through the air. That's right, but there's Brandon Stewart with his first reception of the season. Cousin was there to knock him out of bounds. Well, that'll get you into the ball game in a hurry. This time, the more conventional straight-ahead handoff. Jay Graham, number 25, with his first carry of the afternoon for Tennessee. Tennessee has no tendency of, of pulling that kind of reverse pass play. They haven't used it all year. And uh, they certainly pulled a great time to pull it off here. Now they're going to bring the change in and try to measure. Nothing in the backfield that time. Again, it was Jay Graham. And there wasn't anything there because Hank Campbell stuck his helmet right in his midsection. And Stewart's first pass is going to be incomplete. Intended for Billy Williams on the far side. He sort of bounced it up to him. And boy, if that had been complete, there was this freight train called Leslie Radcliffe. All 302 pounds of him was out there on that wing ready to block and that catch was made. That could have been a six points for Tennessee if he doesn't throw it into the dirt. That'll bring up third down. 13 yards to go from the 32-yard line. And again, it's another solid performance by the South Carolina defense. And the Gamecock fans rise as one to support their team. Under some pressure, lets it go. Got a man open. Pass is caught. But it's not going to be enough yardage for the first down. Aaron Hake coming out of the backfield that time with the reception. But good coverage that time by South Carolina. And that'll force up fourth down. Aiden upset that, as you see in there, coming out of the backfield. And it's just a patient Brandon Stewart that gets it to him. And Aubrey Brooks never saw the pass coming. And then finally, Benji Young made the tackle. And timeout call by the Gamecocks. They weren't set up. He is one of three from this distance. Good snap. Kick is high enough. It's long enough, but it is no good. And a penalty marker is down. And if it's against South Carolina, that's trouble. It could put him close enough to try it again. Bexforth, of course. Oh, there's oh, the hit right yeah, there. He got hit. 
by Terry Cousin. Running into the kicker, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. All right, so they did not give him a roughing the kicker. They just gave him the running into the kicker. So they will have an opportunity to try the field goal again, uh, plus the fact they moved it up five yards. So now the placement of the ball is near the 20-yard line. And so the spot will now be at the 27, making it a 37-yard attempt. He's two of five from this distance. Again, the good snap. This time he drives it. This one is on its way, and he's put the uprights. So the penalty, very costly to the Gamecocks, as it puts three more points on the board after the defense had done its job. And Jerry Cousin will get a reception on the sidelines from the specialty coach for that mistake that took three away from Tennessee, but then gave it right back to him. Kickoff, set to go. Bennett and his five. Looking for some running room to the outside. Crosses the 20 up near the 25 yard line. They might spot it where his knee went down at about the 24 or the 25. Craig King, the first man to get him there for Tennessee. Well, has not uh, necessarily been on target with several of his passes. They operate out of the shotgun. Now shifted to the eye. Straight ahead running that time. Stanley Bridget. Corey Stone. And Defensive tackle in there to make the initial hit, plugging up that middle of the line. All right, now, fans, what we're going to do, we're going to hook you up into Bob Fulton in his 44th year of broadcasting South Carolina football and basketball. So here's Bob and his radio play by play call. Trailing 10 0 at their own 27 yard line. Means and Niplow are pair of wideouts. Tennessee with five down linemen. They're in a 50 type defense. High formation, play action pass. Tannio pressured. He's going to be thrown for a loss. Back at the 19 yard line, Coey Stone from Memphis, Tennessee, along with the defensive end, Steve White, getting in there. If you recall, in that embarrassing game at Knoxville last year, Tennessee sacked the quarterback a total of seven times and we have a Tennessee player shaken up on the play. It is Stone who was in there on the hit 1147 remaining in the first half. Tennessee leads it 10 to nothing and we'll continue in a moment. All right the call right there. Bob Fulton. He has been the most consistent thing in Carolina athletics over the years. He's a great man. A class guy. Uh, Bob is the kind of radio play-by-play -play guy who, at the end of a game, he will go down to the visiting radio booth and visit with the, the other team's play-by-play -play guy, and if the visiting team happens to win, Bob will congratulate the radio guy as if he had thrown the winning touchdown pass. But he's a great, great fellow and beloved by everyone in the Gamecock uh, department and, and just a, a class guy. He'll be honored at halftime. Yes, he will, and we will carry some of those halftime ceremonies with Bob Fulton as you see Corey Stone get up underneath his own power and move to the sidelines. All right, after the sack at Tannehill, it is now third and 15 at the 20-yard line of South Carolina. Again, out of the shotgun. Tannehill with plenty of time. Let's it go over the middle. He's going to be picked off. That's Tyrone Hines with the interception for Tennessee. And let's credit Toby Cates, who Tannehill was trying to find. He wasn't open, but he was there enough to make the grab of Tyrone Hines' jersey and drag him down. For Hines, that's his first interception of the season. Plenty of time. Great blocking on this play by the Gamecock offensive line. Steve lets it go into a crowd, and he just steps right in front of the receiver, Cates, and look at Toby right there to drag him down. Atta boy, Toby. Stewart stays in at quarterback, so maybe the entire second quarter is his to operate, and lots of running room for James Stewart as he just sort of zigged and zagged his way past would-be tacklers, and he's got more than enough yardage for the first down. Ben Washington finally brought him down for South Carolina. Stewart looks like a water bug here. Watch him. Goes right and left and right and left. Finally, he gets knocked down. All Tennessee here in the first 11 minute mark in the second quarter. Some pressure this time. He gets the pass off. It's complete. And again, a four yardage for the first down. 
on the far side. That's David Horn, number 82, who came out and helped out his quarterback. Look at the pressure being applied right here. Stewart got away from it, and Horn slid away from his defender and made himself available, Ted, to receive that pass. Well, Ronnie Smith, the linebacker, finally got back there to cover him and make the tackle. You sure can't fault that defensive line for the rush. They were in his face, pressuring Stewart, but the secondary and the linebackers have got to do a better job. Of Hayden has checked into the backfield now for Stewart. Over the middle, got his man again. Well, it doesn't seem if what doesn't matter if it's Peyton Manning or if it's Brandon Stewart. They like throwing to Joey Kent. He's got another reception. He's got 23 catches coming into this game and two touchdown catches here. Right over the middle. Perfect pattern against the zone defense. And again, the Volunteers knocking on the door. Last time they were this close, they were stopped at the goal line. But through a big time hurdle, and they ruled that Stewart got up over the pile and got in. As he somersaulted his way to pay dirt. him go airborne this time he's in there he hit and flipped right over but what a great job hanging on to the football on that one. well they call it sacrificing the body when you get in tight that's exactly what Stewart did he put six on the board extra point try good snap kick is up it's tacked on and just like that Tennessee now leads it 17 to nothing over South Carolina and this stadium is quiet it is and you know the uh, Tennessee Volunteers have gotten off to an early lead here and that was one of the things that I felt would spell uh, doom for the Gamecocks if Tennessee were to get out early now, the Gamecocks have had to play catch up a number of times this season and touchdown runs like this they could be playing catch up a lot more that's a big time stick there at the line of scrimmage but Stewart as you mentioned gutty enough not to lose the football and he still had the presence of mind to get himself into the end zone and Brad Scott searching for an answer he may be trying to place a call to Bobby Bowden's stool right now to see if he's got a trick play up his sleeve that he can share with him you know Gamecock fans had their hearts broken back on the 15th of October when they saw a comeback against Mississippi State only to see Mississippi State score in the last three minutes and ten seconds so right now the Gamecocks are in another come from behind position here and Bexford getting ready to kick this one off from the 35 yard line it's Bennett and Troop who are back to receive This one headed in the direction of Troop. He takes it at about the seven-yard line, trying to get to the far side. Knifing past one player, eludes another tackler, and finally is going to be rushed out of bounds as he crossed the 20, maybe up near the 22, and now some extracurricular activity on the far sideline. Kendrick Jones was the man to get the Troop first. Tennessee fans saying great tackle. Gamecock fans saying, hey, wasn't that a little bit laid out in the bounds over there? Updating more scores for you now. Ring drive took them Ted only four plays. They went 40 yards, less than two minutes, and the touchdown. Stewart on the run. Tannehill again operating. Bring it out to the near side. That's Reddick looking for some running room. Breaks a couple of tackles. Picked up a couple of extra yards as he moves up near the 25-yard line. Well, the positive thing, Jim, out of that whole drive was. South Carolina needs something to happen. They fumbled the football a little bit, but it got into the hands of the right guy as Brandon Bennett finally gets some running room. Jesse Sanders is there for leads offered seven to nothing. Some say Danny Ford has the magic to pull that one off today. Third and one from the 32. Pritchard trying to get to the outside, and he will have gotten up the first down yardage easily if it wasn't for the fact that Jesse Sanders got an arm tackle on him and brought him down. That's going to be very close to where the first down marker is. And the officials rule that he is going to be short. There's Pritchett. Watch right there on the thigh pad. 
Just took the momentum away from that right leg, which is Pritchett's driving leg. Well, if that doesn't happen, he picks up a huge chunk of yardage. And now fourth and one, and South Carolina trailing 17 to nothing. They're going to go for it in their own territory. Tannehill long count, and I think basically they were just trying to draw him offside. And Tennessee did not bite. The play clock was down to about two when he turned to the official and said, I want time. Straight ahead run. Tannehill diving forward. Tannehill on the keeper. And it'll be a situation of on the spot. Does he have enough of that stretch to get the first down? Will it be the left foot or the right foot spot? Tennessee says no, but they're going to bring the change out. Trading again out of the shotgun. Tannehill keeping, throwing. Lots of running room on the near side. Nice catch that time, and nice move, Toby Cates. I don't know if Todd went over and talked to Brad Scott before he came over and talked to Formation. Tannehill wants to put the ball in the air. Has time, goes over the middle. Again, it's Cates with some running room as he crosses midfield and finally brought down at the 44-yard line of Tennessee. The Carolina Gamecock fans were hoping that they would see early on in this contest. Tannehill fumbles the football. And it's immediately pounced on. Brandon Bennett came up with it. I think that's a case in point where he just took his eye off of it, Ted. He wanted to hand it off before he actually had control of the ball. Not spectacular numbers so far in this game. He has hit his last two passes, however. And the pitch out, some running room. And Bennett is going to be short of the first down marker. was fourth and one they went for it and got it this time it's fourth and two handoff running room first down yard it's better than a lot more as he's down near the 31 yard line and then Paul pitch out Bennett again with running room one more time as he busts through a couple of Tennessee tacklers takes it over the 20 down near the 16 Scott First half, 17-0, Tennessee leads. Abe Cox with their first threat of the afternoon. Pass is bobbled, and they're going to rule that one that it hit the ground, intended for Pritchett. And the pass was low that time by Tannehill. If he would have hit Stanley Pritchett in the hands near the numbers, probably would have picked up good yard. Second and 10 from the 16-yard line. Now they shift into the eye. And it's Pritchett straight ahead. Stanley Pritchett. Jesse Saunders, first guy to get him. Jesse Sanders. Along with Shane Burton. Chit averaging almost five yards a carry this season. Out of the shotgun. Tannehill, good pump fake. Under pressure. In trouble. Now just flips it over to Pritchard, who's got running room and over the 10-yard line. 